All righty. Welcome, everyone, to the first EDIC meeting of 2022. Um, we're doing this virtually, as we have for nigh on two years, and um, we know the rules. Everyone, if you're watching this, you wear a mask out in public, get vaccinated, get boosted. Trust science. Okay. Uh, shall we lead with first things first? I believe that typically uh, we're going to approve some meeting minutes. Now, I have um, one suggestion. Josh, did you get my message about? Yes, I updated the date on the old ones. Okay. Do, we so have, do I have an updated one that says that at our December meeting, we approved... October 19th and November 3rd yes. minutes. I've made the correction. I haven't distributed it to everyone. I'm figuring okay, out so we'll just vote on this with that as an understanding. Oh, we've, yes. got, we've got a Jeff bag incoming. Question though, are we, <laughs> yeah, incoming, are, Jeff. do we have the November minutes that we were still going to for the real meeting in November? I sent those to you, Gwen. Oh yeah. No, I mean, I have them. I didn't share them with any of you. Nope. Nope, we sure don't. We'll do that in February. Okay. Sorry, someone write it down that I have to do that. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, you guys need a Barbara LaBombard on your team. Yeah. <laughs> Usually we don't. We had a strange 2021 where we had a lot of um, every two weeks meetings instead of every four weeks. And that really, ugh, I'll tell you what, that turned into a logistical challenge and it's the end or the regular meeting minutes from november that we have to approve formally in february right right <clears throat> okay okay um, um um feel free to read our agendas beforehand and tell me if you notice things like that are missing um, that requires me forwarding you a message from Cassie. Okay. All right. So then we do have the December minutes to approve. And um, my only change to them, so I would like this reflected, is that uh, the draft that all of us currently have we're, we are going to change the word September to October under the approval of prior minutes. So it says October 19th and November 3rd minutes were approved at our December meeting. <laughs> and uh, if you can accept that change because that reflects reality, then we can talk about uh, accepting a to be amended minutes from Josh. Any, any motions for such? I'd make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Excellent. Any further discussion of the December meeting minutes? Okay. All in favor of approving the December meeting minutes with an amendment to October 19th, uh, minutes having been approved, then holler aye slash raise aye. hand. Aye. aye. Okay. Very good. That is unanimous passage of December's minutes. We'll get all the way caught up by the end of quarter one, 2022. Okay. Um, Dan Rist, I'm wondering if you would like us to switch up our agenda plan, maybe it wasn't my best plan, and speak sooner than later, or would you like to hang out for our planning department update? I believe Bern Maxey thinks that you're talking at 4.30 on City Space, so let's wait for her. Great, can do. She comes in earlier than you can. I invited Wonderful. her because she may have numbers that I failed to have the, to help with what I'm about to present. Okay, very good. Uh, oh, she's here right now. Look at that. Oh, there you go. Then we'll do it. <laughs> we spoke her into existence. I think Dan should be required to stick around for the whole meeting. Um, Tom, if you and Dan have a conflict, I need you to resolve that outside of EDIC time. <laughs> okay. You know, your meetings are a lot more fun than council meetings. There you go. 
Burns Maxi, I see that you have joined us and uh, we have just been talking about moving our um, Old Town Hall section of our agenda to earlier in the agenda. So if you would like to, with Dan, talk now with us about that, you are welcome. Okay, great. So Dan and Burns, uh, if that's amenable to the rest of EDIC, I don't imagine any of you have a problem with that. Let's take it away. Well, I'm here because I am making a huge push this year to try and help City Space reach their goal of sending the project out to bid in the fall of 2022. To do that, they need to finish up getting the donations required to start that construction. In order to do that, I am soliciting your help and the help of anyone else I can think of. But the EDIC is extremely well respected in this community, believe it or not. I, I point to the fact that you recently wow. sent an ordinance for vacant storefronts that uh, our council is excited about. Given that, I want to gauge your reaction to the following statement. I believe that City Space's old town hall performance space, when it's finished, will have the most significant impact on the economy of East Hampton in East Hampton's history. And why do I say that? I say that with certainty because I used to be a production manager for a lot of performances up in Northampton. And every time the Academy of Music emptied out, hundreds of people went into that city at restaurants, at businesses, and the economy always improved when they were able to have performances. The pandemic slowed that down, and that also contributed to what has to be a loss of business revenue. We have vacant storefronts. We have struggling restaurants. Once this pandemic is over, and I certainly think it will be over, in a couple of years with when City Space's performance space is up and running, we will be bringing in on weekends, maybe even during the week, hundreds of people. These patrons, before and after a performance, will go to our restaurants and our businesses, our small ones, and improve the economy of East Hampton. We are already, with the quality of life improvements we've tried to do with the CPA committee, boardwalk, rail trail, et cetera. We've already improved East Hampton as a destination and not a bedroom community. People come here now. But we have vacant storefronts. We have businesses that are struggling. And until we can get people into our city, um, my thesis is this project will do that job. And I'm certain of it because I'm a firsthand witness of that and what it did in North, does in Northampton and will continue to do. We could have concerts, we could have theatrical performances, you know the role. And I may be speaking to the choir, and I, I know that you all probably agree with this thesis, but I, I would like you to consider writing a letter of support. Maybe you send it to the chamber, all the businesses, anybody you can. If they've already donated, ask them to continue to donate, to spread the word to individuals um city space volunteers are working hard to get this done but they need your help because you are listened to and i can't think of a different any other group now there's quality of life things that are also tied to this we have we don't have to go to northampton to watch a concert or something but the ec the economy is what i'm worried about i'm worried about that now and I, I, and I have to admit, I'm a performance guy, I'm a theatrical guy, and I want to see this happen for a lot of reasons. But I also love East Hampton, and I, I, I think the economy will recover even faster if we get this done. So if you agree with that thesis, and a letter of support by your group would be very, very helpful, I think. And, and I'd like to see it sent to the chamber, anybody that can help, and then ask those people to either donate and or spread the word that um, Burns will tell you we're close. And, and I'd, I'd like to turn it over to Burns to tell you where the numbers are right now. But um, East Hampton isn't a wealthy community. I don't know North Hampton's demographics and their numbers, but we don't have those numbers. So we're looking at smaller donations. 
but a very large project of $6.9 million. That's a lot of money. Um, but we're close, right, Burns? We're close? <laughs> We're getting there, Dan. Um, yeah, I just like to echo what you said. And thank you for inviting me to this meeting, Dan. And I appreciate all the efforts that the EDIC um, has taken on, especially in the past year with the initiatives of looking at the empty storefronts. When I walk down Main Street, it really saddens me to see emptiness and over seven storefronts, I think, or, or just right near the old town hall. And I know that this project will absolutely shift that um, easily. There will be people that want or clamoring to use those spaces. I don't see for rent signs in those buildings. And I would love to see those there and for people to inhabit them. But just to give you an idea of where we are and kind of the impact of what this project will have. Um, so it's a $6.9 million project and we have raised with pledges and cash uh, 4.38 million. We also have a bond bill that is sitting on the governor's desk that is $750,000. If we had that put together with that 4.3 million, we have just $760,000 left before we get to the 5.9 million mark to put this out to bid. That's not a lot of money as far as looking at this, the full range of this project. So it seems really feasible. We're getting there. Um, as Dan said, you know, this project, we're, we're looking at all kinds of sources of funding. We know that East Hampton, this is not in my head and in, in our boards had the, an East Hampton project. This is a Western Massachusetts project. And this is, East Hampton is so fabulously situated in the, uh, the Western Massachusetts Pioneer Valley region that we are a hub for this kind of thing. There's all these performance venues opening up all over the place throughout the region. The difference here is we're providing affordable space for artists and community members to imagine what they can create within this space, rather than inviting, although we will do that as well, outside performers to come into the building and, and show their amazing talents too. Um, so a key thing as Western Massachusetts, thinking of this as a hub for our region, as well as not just a performing arts space, but also a community space at large. Um, so we're getting there. Um, to get to that $5.9 million mark, uh, we can go out to bid. So we, can, we have all the plans in place and we will be ready to go. It's a 350 seat performing arts space with about 10 sold out shows a year we'll see close to $100,000 in collateral income to the businesses around Old Town Hall. There'll be more That's, than 10. <laughs> of course, of course, that's just 10. So that gives you an idea of the impact. Um, and I hope that we can count on your support. One way or the other, if you have ideas, I'd love to hear them. Um, as I said, we are looking at many different opportunities, funding opportunities out there um, from small to large, and we will be releasing some really um, good news over the coming weeks um, that will hopefully galvanize even more spirit. So thank you. I'm happy to have you here today. Thanks for joining us. And I'm, I imagine that several people have questions for you, but I get to lead. So my first question is, um, is there a, um, a sector or a set of donors that you are interested in, particularly in drumming up more funding from that you've not seen as much as you thought you might? Yeah, so we start. We launched our business campaign last year with the announcement of Bank ESB's donation, and that has um, brought in interest throughout the community. And we continue to see those donations come in. But you know, it's it's interesting 
to consider, you know, Tom, if you remember with BearFest, how slow it was for the first BearFest for businesses to come on board until they saw what happened. And then they were like, wow, this is great. Um, you know, so Bank ESB is the lead donor for the business campaign. Um, that's one area. The other is chairs. We have this chair program. We have 350 chairs that we are inviting folks to invest in. They're $500 a piece. Um, and we've sold just over 100 chairs. So we have some to sell. And that seems like a price point that's really inviting to the community. It seems feasible. And they like the idea of being able to put their name or somebody that they love and care about's name on a plaque that'll be in the old town hall. So that those are two two areas of interest for really targeting, especially in consideration for the EDIC. Okay. And as a donor to the chair portion of the campaign, I will say there are payment plans available so you don't have to drop five hundred dollars at a go. Thank you. And thank you um, for your donation. What a pleasure. Uh all right. Other comments or questions from the rest of EDIC? When <clears throat> Tom? Burns, uh, I, I'm just curious. I, I, obviously, we probably all know about the efforts, the campaign, the efforts to, to um, you know, improve slash renovate the second story of, of Old Town Hall. Um, we've all seen either social media or print media, uh, the large donors. I'm, I'm just curious if there's been any grassroots effort to John Q. Public. Um, I mean, I know, like I said, I know about this project from top to bottom just because I know important people in the community like Dan Rist. But I don't know if my neighbors know about it who don't happen to be connected. And I'm not trying to simplify this, but to get $760,000, you need 760 people to give $1,000, if I did my math correctly. <laughs> In a community of 16,000 people, granted that's man, women, and child, in a community of 16,000 people, I don't know how many households that is, 8,000 households maybe? Boy, 760 doesn't seem like a big mountain to climb to get 760 people to give $1,000. It really doesn't. And I invite you to talk to your neighbors and um, to those that are connected to your neighbors. And, you know, that's how the thread happens. A few things that we have done specifically is when um, 2020 hit and the pandemic hit, we um, we launched a virtual tour to get people into the space. One thing that we found is that people respond when they walk into the building, especially in the second floor, and they can envision what could happen there. Um, and we sent postcards to every household within East Hampton um, okay, that's, about that's the project. What I, was looking at, Burns. I, was, I wasn't sure there was some sort of mass mailing, so that's good. Yeah, it, and you know that's um, that's always a good thing to do to reach out. We definitely gained new supporters from that, as well as a lot of um, interested folks who had never heard about the project. Um, but it's always good to be reminded of that. Uh, you know, we do get the word out on social media about donors who are in the $500 level or, or below even, um, so as well as those major donors. Because you're right. I mean, if you see that somebody's given $500,000, that's awesome. But that might not seem tangible to you. Yeah. <laughs> Other questions or comments from EDIC? Cassie. You're muted, friend. There. Um, if this is perceived as being a Western Mass project, which I think is very cool, are there ways that we can extend out into Western Mass to large companies with deep pockets? I um, think I, this is not an area of my expertise, but like Yankee Candle or some of the other bigger players. Yes, if you if you have names and thoughts of who could be added to our list of who we're reaching out to, if you have connections to any folks that are major players within those businesses, mm -hmm. um, you know we have everything. We have a naming opportunities throughout the building, from 
ten thousand dollars to a million dollars where you can name different rooms and spaces throughout the building from the bathrooms to the um, auditorium. And so there's a lot of opportunity for people to add their names or their, of their businesses as part of the project too. Um, but yes, if you, ha if you have names and thoughts, please, please share them with us. Um, just because, you know, the, we don't necessarily think of all of the businesses and sometimes are blindsided by our own understanding of who's in our arena. Anybody else on the EDIC side have a question or a comment? Tom's got another one. Sorry, Gwen. Um, That's okay. I I'm wondering, uh, you know, you were, you were kind enough to share with us Deanne's um, letter to the editor. I I'm wondering if EDIC could do something along those lines do sort of a letter to the editor and have each of our names on there, not just EDIC, but put our personal names to it because then people we're connected to might, you know, there might be a ripple effect there. And yeah. either you could write it or Paul's really good at writing too. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> um, if I'm I... apologizing, I think it goes to Paul's ego and all of your egos. I am here to tell you that you do have impact. And that letter would be fantastic because it sends a message that this group realizes the economic impact that this project has. And secondly, if you have an email list or maybe Mo's group, the chamber has an email list and you can send that letter of support out to there, it spreads the word. And maybe you can mention the ideas that you brought up uh, about donating, uh, getting to other people, especially the chair idea where you know people may not know about the fact that you can buy a chair or donate for a chair at the have your name there forever i think that's fantastic uh, any letter all i'm asking is use your influence in some way a letter to the editor and a letter in your email list that'll jump start this i i know 760,000 I guess I'm, I'm just not living in, in bankers' mathematics, but 760000 still seems like a lot of money to me. And 760 people giving $1,000, I don't know whether we're going to find that, but maybe twice that many people giving 500 would be possible. And we're not talking about a lot of time here. If we want to reach that fall 22 goal, Mm. We have to work quickly. So I'm asking you to consider that Tom's idea, especially um, because you do you, you do have influence. You really do. Um, and I'm here. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think so. So uh, thank and you and for listening. And even me. even to us bankers, uh, seven hundred sixty thousand is a big number. That's why we break it down to the smallest common denominator and you you broke it down even better so we need 1500 people to give 500 bucks and that uh, what's that one tenth of the population i mean it's not bad but right paul yeah um i think that there's certainly this is a receptive audience i think you said earlier preaching to the choir um it's not hard to um sell us on economic growth projects um, this is definitely seems like it would be that. Whether or not it would be the biggest economic driver in the history of the city is tough to say. I mean, you know, I don't know. I would think look at like Williston and be like, oh, well, they've kept us afloat through some tough times, you know. But still, huge opportunity. I think the demographics in the area are favorable for this kind of uh, business. I would. There's so many possibilities and potentials with that space, um, and even I would wonder. And I and I don't know the people involved, and in but. You know, Northampton does such a good job kind of cross-promoting all of their venues. Um, if there was any way to tie in promotionally as we have events coming up. Um, but really, there's so much potential with that space and with what we could do with it. And I think that we'd be happy to create, a, I mean, just being for myself, but I imagine so. Yeah, we'd be pretty happy to write a letter of support and do what we can to help you guys. Thank you so much. That does make me wonder, I, I read my... Winterfest email, but I didn't retain all of its contents. Does Old Town Hall have a plan to have like a hey, we're in East Hampton too thing during Winterfest, which is very pond oriented? We do not. We do not. Okay. We, we, so we, um, in the past, I'll year, wear a sandwich board. <laughs> okay, that would be great. It wouldn't be the first time that's happened outside the Old Town Hall. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so we we really are focusing on our efforts right now for our first floor space. Um, unfortunately, nobody's using it for the Winterfest, to my knowledge. Um, and we renovated the old flywheel space and our received our certificate of occupancy right in time for Omicron to happen. Um, so we are just stepping gingerly right now, but we have so many people that want to utilize the space from everything from potlucks to storytelling workshops to um, to performances that are have longer runs from one to two weeks. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of need. When we opened up the space for use, we had over, I think over 15 requests within a week's time for use of the space. So we had done a significant amount of surveying for the building and the first floor space, but um, to see that actually come to fruition and people say, yes, we need this, we want this, um, was really exciting. So we're excited to open that back up and um, get that revenue in action as well as host things like Winterfest. So if you have friends on the Winterfest committee, tell them to come use our space. Well, so I think, um, I think that you can hear that EDIC is supportive in general, of Old, Town, Old Town Hall's renovation and its um, <laughs> contribution to the vitality of our city in the near and the long term. Um, and I think it is not at all a stretch for us to write a letter, write multiple letters, um, be creative about that, make that possible. And it looks like Jeff Bag has something he'd like to share. Thank you. Um, I think it's great. I think this seems like great timing for, I'm not on the EDIC, but I can't, I used to come to every meeting. Uh, I haven't come to a couple for a while now, but, um, I think this is good because the, the I mean, I, I hope this is okay, but like to share, like to bridge the gap for like Dan and, and Burns and the committee is the committee's talked about engaging more in, in projects and project support. Um, so I think this is kind of like the perfect example of one where EIC is, you know, can really um, emphasize its support for this. Um, in terms of the biggest impact, I mean, I think definitely to arts and culture and kind of continuing to make you know, anchor East Hampton for arts and culture destination. This this will have one of the biggest impacts for arts and culture. Um, so if that's one way to kind of finesse that a little bit, uh, that in my mind that would be kind of a, a way, a, a much simpler way to say that. Um, just a, a tidbit on on things that would come forward again for EDIC to continue to support the project is things like parking and shared parking and wayfinding, um, and and then you know the promotion of the space once it's solidified i think would be ways that the edic would continue to see this through um and then we have um you know on the agenda is the local rapid recovery plan that the city has done and you know the old town hall is in that plan and the edic is having discussions about i think what what do we do with that plan and how do we promote the projects listed in it so i see there's kind of multiple ways for edic to not just do this once and if, if EDIC latches onto the idea of a newsletter, then then it'll be just another way to echo the yeah, echo promoting the project because it's gonna be, you know, if we can get all the funding, if, if if Burns and her crew can get all the funding, then there's construction and then there's like the thing that everyone would, would be able to continue to promote after it's there. So EDIC would have like a role like throughout the continuum. This is kind of the first glimpse, not the not the last. So I just wanted to chime in on that. Useful. Thanks. And if I may say the um, just a continuation of that, I don't think it stops at the old town hall. You know, it really does include the Main Street Historic District and the Union Street Corridor and going on to the Cottage Street Cultural District. And many moons ago, when we applied for the Cottage Street Cultural District, we looked at the entire city as a possibility. And the MCC was like, no, 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 there's not a connecting point here. Um, and it really does start to connect the Mill Street District. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, the Mill District and um, the Cottage Street area. And it's sort of like this, this sort of full U that we've created um, as the initial layout and design of the city. We've like brought it full full circle. Um, so, friends. Um... What should we do next? Shall we shall we tell Dan and Burns that we commit to 
writing letters of support and thinking creatively with them as we move forward into uh, fundraising for Old Town Hall and raw rye. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, I'd love to see that letter before you send it out, but I or after you send it out, I, I just hope that we don't delay on this too much because um, we're looking at a deadline of fall to send out the bid. So um, I don't. I think that that the timing is 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 important right now. So if you can move on and maybe I see moves quickly when we're jazzed, and I think we're pretty jazzed about this. I'm glad to hear that. Very good. I guess I have another question. Um, are there any other fundraising initiatives that you have planned in the near future? Yes. So we have a number of fundraising initiatives. Um, where we are looking at um, potential sort of different types of fundraising initiatives. So the way that we've done this in the past is we've had smaller and larger events. You know, it's it's very COVID dependent, some of these larger events. Um, so some that we were planning on this winter, we're moving out to the spring. Um, some are smaller private events in people's living rooms and things like that, which we've seen great success that you get a bunch of your friends together. Um, you know, our board has done it extensions of our board, people that just are connected and interested in making this project happen, invite their friends into their living room, and we come and talk about the project and get people um, engaged with it, and hopefully to donate as well. Um, so that's those are some initiatives we've done. And we're also looking at some things that'll be coming out soon that I can't quite exposed here at this meeting um, that are really exciting. I'll just say, leave it at that. But yes, yeah, definitely events um, are part of it. Fundraising through foundation and grants, as well as major donor um, relationship and cultivation, and those individual donors that are in the $500,000 range. A, a second thing, um, I just thought of this. Well, Paul's writing his letter, maybe a second letter to our state reps, telling them, number one, we got to get on that bond release. I hear a catch-22 happening that they're not going to release a bond unless we start building. And we have phased in this, burns the project in a sense that we're able to do some, we just approved, the council did some infrastructure improvement in the, in the old town hall as part of the project, but they can't begin massive construction and it would appear that bond that bond isn't released until they know that something's happening, like maybe that you build the elevator and then they'll release the bond. That's not going to work. So letters to the state reps about that bond. And if there is any American Rescue Plan Act funding out there, I mentioned in my letter to the editor, uh, Holyoke Victory Theater just got $250,000. Why can't we see some of that as well? I'm talking about from the state. I know the city may be getting some of that money, but that, that's got to, <laughs> you don't know the kind of wastewater treatment plant issues we've got, so I just won't get into that. But in any case, um, that's the kind of thing, too, that you, you guys have impact on. So letters to the senator along those two lines, uh, Senator Vilas and Senator and Dan Carey. Dan, Dan and the senator seem to be very much in support of this, but they need to talk it up at the state level. So that bond gets released. So maybe we get some infrastructure money too. Okay, that's Thank useful you. input. All right, um, I think that we sh we need to close out this conversation and get some input from Jeff Bag, Dan, and Burns. You're more than welcome to stay and learn. Um, and also, um, you know, let me know if you want to come to a future meeting. Maybe we'll come to your future meetings. Watch out. Um, <laughs> You're okay. happily invited to any council meeting, Gwen. <laughs> oh, gosh, thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a treat. They're uh, not that bad. I, yeah, they are. <laughs> They're frequent. I'll call them frequent. Um, so do we need to do anything right here in the way of um, yays, nays, motions? Do we? Or, or is this like we're, we've got a little gentleman's agreement here that we're going to give you a we're going to give you some support? I think that I think your that. promise is your word is is good enough for me and parents, I'm sure. So and, if you need and, if you need any help with information, you you know where to find me. I'm happy yeah. to supply it. Great. All right. Thank, thank you, you both. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. I look forward to Paul's letter. 
Sorry, Paul, I put you. It wasn't me. It was Tom that did that. So. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Oh, thank you guys very much. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye, you too. Um, all right. So, Jeff Bag, welcome to our meeting. It's been so long. Your beard looks great. Um, <laughs> would you like to uh, be part of our conversation today? What's going on in planning? Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I was speaking at the agenda. I was speaking at your agenda. Do you want me to? Do you want to talk about the things on your agenda first and make sure we cover those? I do. Yes. Okay. So I apologize for missing a bunch of meetings in the past. It's, my schedule is like ridiculous, but um, I think it's going to continue to be that way. But I will. I am trying to commit to coming. It's just at this time, um, my my kids have a lot of activities now, and this the, the four o'clock time frame has been more challenging than I would have thought to get to these meetings. But so that's really the only that's the reason I haven't been here. Um, I th so looking at the agenda, was it Cottage Street Development? I didn't know if you had a specific question. If you wanted to give me a little guidance first before I, I try to talk about what that what that question might have been. I think this was this came to our uh, attention recently from Tom. I think it was along the lines of we had some energy behind um, Joe's pa Joe's Jim's the package yeah. store, um, and the gas station next to it. What, what do we know? What's going on there? Yep. All right. That's what I thought, but I didn't want to be presumptuous. So we all know, understand it's a private developer who's doing that project. So um, the 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 thing that I understand um, is that they are moving Jim's package store to the to the building that's behind it on Adam Street. Um, you notice that they, the 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 color of it changed. So now it's a green building, but it once once was the Harley Davidson um, spot. So they are renovating that to prepare for the store to move there. And um, good, bad, or indifferent, the, the zoning change that was approved um, like a year ago to allow businesses to, to change spaces without, if they're not making substantial improvements to the exterior, changes to the exterior, then they can do that without permit approval. So that qualified to move the package store there without, without review by the planning board. So my understanding is that that has to happen first. Um, and then um, what we're being told, and we ask frequently, because it's a project that we think is pretty good for um, the city and for downtown, um, that that would allow them to proceed with um, the demolition of gyms and the gas station. Um, so that was a change that, that did get approved by the planning board a while back, which was a change to the project scope. Originally, they were going to... Um, Originally, they were going to renovate gyms and try to keep it open during most of the construction. And so I think as they got into it, you know, the nuts and bolts of looking at all the depths, they decided and they got approval for the planning board to modify the plan to, to, to demolish gyms building and the building and then just build new. So as far as we understand it, that project is moving forward. Um, I think the biggest thing that had happened was the cost of construction. You know, I think it's still very high the cost, but it spiked, and that they they didn't proceed for a little while because of that. But what we're told is that they're going to proceed. So um, I think it would be good for this group to understand if they pull like a building permit. Um, you know, any information that we all know and have, like to kind of send out factual information to people, would be good. But one of the first things we'll see is like construction fence will go up. You know, they probably have some remediation to do inside the building before they take it down. But, you know, we're hoping that they kind of pull a building permit soon and could get some work done as soon as like the winter, you know, you know, a lot of projects are happening throughout the winter anyway. So, so that's kind of what I know is that we're told it's going to go forward. It would be 21 uh, residential units, um, which is up a little bit. I think originally it was 19 and in that change, it went up to 21. And five of those are uh, permanently affordable housing units. And then they build out um, two, two spaces for commercial. It could be one space or it could be two spaces, but that first floor facing the street would be like commercial. And that's so it's a mixed use building. So that's kind of the summary that I would have based on all just random conversations together. Is the plan for gyms to move back into the original location, meaning is the Adam Street location temporary, or is that where they're going to live from now on? 
Not that, that I was, keep an eye on this place or anything. That was my that was my understanding is that that would be the permanent relocation of gyms, so that it would <laughs> it would free up that space to be something new on facing Cottage Street. Got it. Great. Um, we had also on our list uh, maybe some some follow up if if there's any that's applicable right now about. Um, the smart growth overlay district proposal, uh, extending it over to Pepin school. Yep. Et cetera. And, yep. So it's to expand it over to Pepin, which is in theory, that's kind of non-controversial, like, cause the 40 R district goes right up. It covers the center school and the parking lot that's right next to Pepin, but it didn't have Pepin. Um, the folks at the state thought that that was kind of, that that could even be like an administratively small addition. Um, but through the process, I'm sure this group is aware, but through the process, um, the look at um, Route 10, Northampton Street, and the the area where Tasty Top is, Cernak Buick, all the way up to Florence Road, that that was a new proposal, and so that's really what all the groups have been have been looking at and vetting, and that's in the that's in the proposal now um, that has been submitted to the state, so the um, DHCD. It's the Department of Housing and um, Community Development has to review the that change. That's a big one. And so we submitted the application on December 31st, which gives DHCD a 30-day review period. So we're in that 30-day review period. And, and what's supposed to be happening is next week uh, on the 25th is the next continued hearing of ordinance and the planning board. But I think what I'm concerned, what I'm a little bit concerned with, is we may not hear back from DHCD before that. So that might that meeting might it should happen, but we might go over nuts and bolts and then continue that for another period of time so we can hear if DHCD has comments. So um, that's kind of the status of that. But I think EDIC's presence there would be helpful. You know, um, to um, maybe on the 25th okay. just to be there. And then, but then, you know, as, as that process unfolds, it would be good to have some representation from EDIC there to just be prepared to talk positively about, you know, economic development and the production of housing are both like really important things that this group has talked a lot about and that, that amendment okay. would help with both. Um, is there a, an obvious place that that will just exist publicly to know before that meeting happens, whether we have heard from DHCD or not, or can you tell me? I would be able to indicate to you if we've gotten the, the feedback, but um, we really probably, we have to convene next Tuesday yeah. regardless. It's just right. whether we'll have enough substance from DHCD to, to kind of take a next step or not. I don't know that yet. Okay. Tom. Jeff, I, I know that um, the last joint meeting Gwen and I attended and I jumped off after about an hour just because it seemed like it was a slam dunk. It seemed like everybody who was there was in favor of this change. And so while while I could have chimed in and spoken positively about it, it almost seemed like it was going to be redundant overkill, if you will. Yeah, and you're that's a good point, Tom. I mean, what stage of the process we would be in now is the the uh the local public hearing process that's planning board and ordinance and then it goes to full city council so maybe you're right like maybe you know shifting a focus to that city council meeting might be good you know one of the things you might hear along the way at some point is just just the, the general like well why do we need more housing you know do everyone's kind of hunky-dory here like why does east hampton even need more housing why would we bend over backwards to create zoning that would build more housing so just that just that general statement of support for the idea which is we're working off of incentives like so this is an incentive based product um and that incentive is that with this zoning in place a developer can build more units Mm -hmm. because that's you know by building more units is how they cover the costs for providing the affordable units right so if they build more units we get 20 percent of whatever the units is become permanently affordable so you know it's an incentive-based program that we we're, we're trying to support and so just having that consistent you know support along the way in case we get people who you know we're for whatever reason opposed to have more housing that, that would be the idea but I apologize because now I'm, I'm thinking about this and not knowing if we're going to move substantially 
next Tuesday. I understand the issue with people arriving at that meeting. Well, but. it's not a bad thing to have it on our radar, so that's okay. Okay. Um, your comment about looking at Route 10 um, triggered something in my head. I did see that an upcoming, maybe it's a planning board meeting. I don't really remember. Um, there is a proposal to build a drive through Starbucks near Tasty Top. Yeah. Yeah. Continuing so to go. I can solicit yeah. your input on that right now. I can also, um, I think that meeting is this, this week, maybe and it's tonight at six. Yeah. So, um, I think the, the, I'm trying to figure out whether that is the sort of thing <clears throat> where we need to have that more, uh, Hey, EDIC, is this something we want to speak in favor of in, in a week? Yeah. I don't, I don't know how we do that without having a regular meeting. Yeah, no, it's a trick. And it's um, so, you know, the, the mechanism that we put in place earlier was that the chair of EDIC is supposed to get an email, the transmittal. So when the planning department gets an application, we have to transmit it out to boards, committees, and public officials. And so, Gwen, I, I got to check to make sure that you've been getting those. But that would have been the moment in time about a month ago. Well, maybe between between two weeks and a month ago, you should have gotten an email. And if that's not happening, then I got to work on that. Um, Curtis, who is the assistant planner, who deals with the planning board, announced that he's leaving. He's taking another job. Um, like, it's a good thing for him, and I wish him luck. But I will be filling in that role again uh, temporarily while we advertise the position. But so I'll, I'm going to double check that. But so tonight, the planning board is going to hold the first public hearing on that application. Um, you know, I think just to be candid, and I know that we're, you know, what we're doing here in the public meeting, but uh, I think traffic on Route 10 is one of the issues that will come up. Um, but other than traffic on Route 10, this is kind of a standard, this is kind of a standard application. Um, I will tell the, this group that um, if you're imagining looking at Route 10, Burger King is on your left. Um, there's always been, if you've ever looked at it, there's that muddy dirt lot right next to Burger King. That's where this next development is going. It is not consuming the whole rest of that parcel. It's kind of, it's kind of running parallel to looking at McDonald's, um, Burger King, and then there would be this other drive through facility, which is going to, is proposed to be a Starbucks. Yeah. So it consumes about a hundred feet by like a certain depth in of the, of that parcel, but there's, there's a lot more um, of the tasty top lot left for, for these other discussions that, you know, with the supporting housing and things like that. So that is before the plane. I don't know if this is a one and done. Um, I think it's a little bit bigger than just the one hearing and done. Um, but I think the, the biggest issue that I, we've seen is the potential impact to, to traffic on route 10. Right. Quinn. So, um, Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Cassie. Passions run high on this subject. Um, I see you, Josh Rosenblatt. Is this something that we should formulate an opinion of as a committee? Well, right. That's my that's my um, thinking. Having just I looked out of curiosity at the next um, agenda and went, oh, oh, mm, okay. Um, so the timing is bad because we have 10 minutes left of this meeting and that first hearing is to, is in an hour. Yeah. Um, so if, if people have strong initial reactions, we can decide from there whether we've got something to say as EDIC. Um, if, if you need convincing, I don't know. If people have strong initial reactions, Tom, you got something? Josh, you're making a face. Tom, I, um, I, I, I am all... <laughs> <laughs> my, my worry about uh, something like Starbucks is that it's not a local business. Yes, it, it has the potential to bring a lot of money into East Hampton, but um, what's the longevity of that money staying in East Hampton when it's not, when it's a large multinational, multinational corporation? Um, it would Fair be question. much nicer to see like a, something like a Shelburne, even though there is one on Union Street already, but something that's more local go into there. But that you know, that's my personal opinion, and I I don't want that to fly in the face of potential economic development for East Hampton. So, Fair. if I'm alone yeah. in that, I will respectively keep quiet. Yeah, I think I think like the Dunkin' Donuts, Josh, on over at East Street and Route Five, Route Ten. 
five and ten and whatever route it is um I, I think the bottom line and, and i'm not trying to be flip about it but the bottom line is is the tax dollars to, to me that's the real benefit to the community um you know will starbucks be a big supporter of a little league team or some other things in town maybe maybe not i don't know if it's going to be a it could be a local franchisee for all i know i'm not sure um so i don't want to discount it just because it's a major corporation but um and i think jeff you gave a great clarification because this thing blew up when cassie talks about about passions running high this blew up on social media because the general statement was starbucks is going on the tasty top property and somebody thought that meant the entire tasty top property and never thought for a minute it would be this small footprint next to burger king and so hopefully that gets clarified uh, in your in your planning board meeting um the the, the what, where I get passionate about is the whole discussion about traffic, and I think that's a, I, th I think that's a defensive mode for people to get behind because businesses don't create as much traffic as they try to go where the traffic already is. So if Starbucks was going to build on Park Hill Road, um, they might go out of business because there's no traffic on Park Hill Road. And they're not going to draw a ton of people to Park Hill Road. Dunkin' Donuts is going on the corner of East and Route 5 and 10 because there's a lot of traffic there. So they might generate some more traffic, but they're trying to capture what's already there. So I think it's a red herring when people throw up traffic as a reason to not approve these projects. No matter what goes in the Tasty Top mm -hmm. property, it's, there's going to be traffic even if housing goes in there. There's going to be more cars. So, if it's zone business. So we got two opinions. We got a Josh. We got a Tom. Mo. So I I just wanted to say that I I can really appreciate um, Josh's um, feelings and thoughts around you know big box and that sort of thing. But I think we also need to be aware and be careful. I mean, if this if their application um, you know fills or, or fills all the requirements, I, you know, it's really, do we, I don't know how we can, you, you can not allow them, you know, if they're um, accommodating all of the requirements and all of the zoning and everything, you can't necessarily say, no, you can't do this. It's like also, you know, when, you know, landlords, we can't dictate what and who landlords rent to, right? We have our wishes and we have our desires and and um, thoughts and feelings and, you know, but we can't, you know, if somebody's going to rent from somebody, that's the landlords, you know, that's what they do. And I might also um, share, and I think I've shared this once before, that when Stop and Shop was wanting to come in um, over on Route 10, you know, folks were very up in arms about <clears throat> um, big box. I am not necessarily pro big box. It's just something that I declare. But from an economic standpoint and from a fairness standpoint, um, you know, people were upset about that. But I heard a lot of input off to the side. Well, what we really need is a Trader Joe's. And it's like, well, you know, one man's big box is acceptable, yet another's is not. Right. So there's that gets kind of sticky. Right. And that's my comment. Oh. Um, I just I agree with um, what Tom said about the traffic. I, I did see that I believe the there was a potential Dunkin' Donuts going on on the top of Mount Tom, where the um, the old um, okay. were operating like an independent type coffee thing up there before, but it shut down with the pandemic. And um, I believe that was defeated, and the main thing was traffic. And I thought to myself how ludicrous that was because that that street's always jam packed, and they were just running the same exact business up there. But people still defeated it and saying it was going to be a traffic issue. Um, but you look at Route uh, Route 10, and that's the perfect spot for a place like Starbucks if we're going to have one, because that's where those kinds of businesses that we have in this community go. That's where we have. You know, Duncan's right over there as well. And there's the BK and there's McDonald's. And for all the chains that are food related, like that's a great spot for them. That's where they do business and they've been successful. And in the community, you know, if they're spending money there, that brings them value. But I do agree with Josh. It'd be great to see a local business that would keep the money local because it goes to Starbucks and just goes out to Seattle. And, you know, it doesn't really stay here. But, you know, 
That is as I, is with all of those. However, you know, I agree with you 100%, Paul. And really, it is the ideal spot for that because that's we, what we don't want, or I would, I would be worried about is those types of things popping up on Cottage Street or Union Street, yes. or Main Street, mm -hmm. right? That's when we start to start. So we're starting to fool around with our, you know, the character of our walkability, you know, our walkable city, and you know who we are. And, and once that starts to happen, that once that one starts to happen, then it's it just starts to unfold, and before you know it, there's a lot of that right. there. So that's a great. Thing. So, yeah. Um, would you say then that we have a we have a a strong opinion as EDIC that would allow us to have something to say this evening? I'm withdrawing my uh, objection. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I I did put it in the record that I that I did have that objection, but I mean, the the points that Tom, Mo, and Paul have raised all do make sense, and the fact that there's a CVS across the street, uh, King Burger, and a McDonald's right there, you know, it uh, and the traffic is already there as well. So, mm -hmm. I'm not going to make a stink about it. I feel differently about the. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts up on where Mount Joe to go is, but that's for other reasons. That's not traffic, you know. But in terms of this this effort, I'm I'll keep my mouth quiet. <laughs> yeah. um, and I will say so, I agree with you about the Mount Joe to go. I didn't think that it was great great thing to become a Dunkin', but the traffic did seem a little bit ludicrous to be the reason. Right. Yeah. Sure. So um, it is not in my. It's no longer in my calendar as a thing that I can do tonight. Um, is it conceivable that sending a message via email or whatever to members of the planning board, et cetera, is a worthwhile thing to do? This this close to the public hearing or not really? I don't know. Is that allowed for us to, to do that sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, technically, it it could come in still. I mean, um, yeah, that's that that could happen if if the group kind of decided. I think the other couple things are that I'm not sure that it'll be approved all in one night, and it might be interesting to see what kind of feedback comes comes through in the public hearing. I don't know, you know, if this is going to draw a lot of people out. It could, it very well could, um, <clears throat> but you know, I think it's it's this is an interesting discussion because I think we all understand like we can't dictate what happens on the private properties so it's it's tricky when someone says i want to trade our joe's because i kind of i kind of would like that too but we can't necessarily like make that happen unless the private landowner is is able to to come up with that conversation and, and get the deal for them to come um we're at the we're at a little bit of like you know we're at the i wasn't gonna say the whim we're at the we are bound by some of the decisions that the private landowner is making. We tried, this is the same property that we were trying to support, you know, a cannabis amendment to, to, to allow cannabis cultivation. And so that didn't work out. And so, you know, this is kind of, I, maybe that's in response to this a little bit, but um, yeah, I haven't, I don't know. It's hard for me sometimes to, to give input on something when we haven't heard, had the first public hearing. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to, I say too much yet, but I think the one thing I do want to fix is Gwen in getting you on these transmittals for you to kind of see these applications coming forward. And then that would be the, that's the cue to get something to this group ahead of time, yeah. not the night it of. It was so. happening for a little while and it stopped okay. sometime. Um, I, I would also quickly add that for us to generate um, some sort of letter for the hearing that's in 59 minutes, I think it might be a little bit short notice for us. And I'd rather Yeah, see I agree. This. So I was thinking of, um, you know, there have been times when I've gone to things and been like, okay, so I'm a private citizen. I happen to be the chair of EDIC. Here's what I think. And they make of that what they will without me saying I represent the EDIC. So, um, Mo. I have a, my question is to Jeff. And if for some reason, whatever the reason, that there is a lot of um, 
passion that shows up for this evening, would that signal or kick in or or give the opportunity for another public meeting or is that just the end of that? It's hard to say for sure, but I would say that there is another item that is before the application we're talking about. So, and it's the, it's a long one that's been going on for a while, um, really to something at like Fort Hill. Then they'll take up this, um, this new application. And if there are a lot of people who want to speak, then, then just by the length of time that the planning board usually meets, that might just cause another continuation. But I guess to, if, if, if everyone came and said they don't want a Starbucks, like the plan, that's not one of the things on the list. Like the planning board doesn't like go through the list and say, Oh, it's a use that no one wants. Okay. So we can deny it. Like it's, it's, un it's just not one of their criteria. Right, right. Um, the thing that I think will be the main question is traffic and whether, you know, whether, and, and the, there's a slight difference between this one and East street, whereas East street had a very specific pin, a pinpointed impact that, that could really be directly correlated um, to an intersection and a project, whereas this one, it's just a kind of all route 10. So the likelihood that at the end of the day, you know, that's, that's the end of the deal. I don't think that will happen, but it might, the planning board might want to get more information on traffic, for example, and that would, that would definitely cause a continuation to another meeting. So, okay. sorry, it's, it's a, it's a good question, Mo. I, I, I just don't know how to answer it yet. Cause I, I don't know how long the first matter is going to go. And that would often sure. dictate whether the planning board has enough energy to keep going, but chances are good that this is going to not, this is going to require another meeting just, just because. I, so I guess I, my input would be, um, I would agree with Josh that it's, it's, I would hate to do something because we felt like we had to right away. I would rather be thoughtful and um, do the right thing at the right time. Yeah. Uh, and have a more. Right, so I will, I'll pay attention to what happens with that. And then if we need to follow up, we need to follow up. So um, Jeff, I'm going to say we're not talking about the local rapid recovery bit now. I would like to wrap this up by asking how we would like to move forward as a group with um, the idea of getting out a, a draft of an EDIC newsletter, which Paul has drafted for us. Um, there are a couple of things to figure out, including logistics. Are these the topics that we want? Like, can we all sign on to this in good conscience? I think that we can in general. I think it's good writing. Nicely done. Thank you, Paul. Mm. Um, and Maybe um, instead of saying, well, we need a, a whole group live editing session or whatever, I'm wondering if a couple of us can say we will be the subcommittee that decides what's happening with this newsletter and the rest of the EDIC trusts us to do this well, and they will see it through ASAP. Thoughts on that topic? Mo? I, just, I, I need to sign off shortly, so I wanted to share, and I think, Paul, you did a really great, great job. And mm. job well done, mm. and I think it would be very um, effective because it's it's short, sweet, concise, and to the point. And that is my two cents. Well, thanks. Good job. job well Thank you, Mo, for reading it and for having that input. Yeah. Have a really good night. Thank you. Hi, Mo. Bye, all. Um, Hi, Mo. So, thoughts from the rest of you? What What do you got? And Tom. Um, I loved it, Paul. It was great. I wouldn't change a word. My only, my only um, question or comment is by by identifying it as a newsletter, it gives the impression that something's going to be happening on a recurring basis, like a monthly newsletter, like a quarterly newsletter. Yeah. What if it was simply EDIC news? And it just came out whenever we had some news to report, as opposed to some regular schedule, because when will the next one come out? Next month, next quarter, June, I don't know. Does that matter? It's just, to me, the, the word newsletter connotates a regular communication. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. And that's part of the conversation that we had when we were deciding to do this in the first place is, Let's not overcommit ourselves necessarily to something that you're going to know comes out on the second Thursday of every quarter. That's right. Might not. Right. 
I'll say that I used the word newsletter just because it was just kind of the theme I was going with is I want to write like kind of a letter to people that is selling them news, but in a positive and kind of an informative, but kind of a lighthearted way. Um, I don't want to us to certainly uh, commit to a schedule of releasing these things. I think it's something that we can do as we feel like we want to. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think that we could even, we could even say, when we've got stuff to say, you'll hear from us or something yeah. to that effect that's more elegant mm -hmm. than that. Perfect. The EDIC updates. letter that has news. It's the not a newsletter. Updates. Yeah. updates. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So based on that, Cassie, do you have any um, preliminary response? Any any hope that, that there would be editing or whatever? Do we need to get a subcommittee of editors together or do I just need to go figure out logistics of how this gets to the city and how the city gets it to people? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking you if you have your own opinions about the content as, as Tom I and Josh Paul did a beautiful job. Yeah, yeah, same. Very good. Okay. So then I think what we're going to do then is um, ha J Jeff Bag. You're right. I know I'll, I'll get uninvited, I'm sure, from your meetings. But uh, no, I thought Paul did a great job too. So the only thing I wanted to ask about was each of the, especially with that first one, each of the projects listed has more information available. Um, it just so happens that all of them exist in the planning department's page, but I do think it could be good to include, uh, for more information, you know, either click here or go here. Cause mm. you're really just scratching the tiny surface on big projects that it it's likely to be good for getting the word out, which is the goal. But I think it's kind of immediately people, some people might want to dig deeper. And so we do have pages like, except for the LRP plan, which um, I know we're skipping that. I do have to, I wanted to get it to you guys. I have to figure out, we're going to do a press release to say it's out and then I'll put it on the website somewhere. But so that too, will have a place where there's more information. So each of them have more information available. And I just think that it might be good to wedge that in there. Like for anyone who wants more information, go here. So that was my, that was my two cents on those. Yeah, I think that's great. We can do that pretty easily, right? Um, okay, so then it sounds like I would like to get it documented that um, all present approve the content of that document and amending it just with, for your information, see this link. Um, so can I get a motion for such? I move to accept it as it is with a little thing that says for more information. Is that it? And yes. removal of the word uh, newsletter. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I'd second okay. that. Second. Excellent. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Very good. Five of seven people. Man, killing it. Um, great. So we're going to do that. I will make it my task to figure out who do we send it to, where will it go, what, are, what is the timeline, et cetera. I will share what I learned with you. Um, is there any reason that we need to have another meeting sooner than four weeks from now? No, unless we think we might need it for the city space letter. Uh, I kind of think that we do. Yeah. yeah. Because I think that an action step from that is to, to draft something. Paul, Dan Vallen told you that I took as tongue in cheek. You do not need to accept that. You do a lot of writing for this group. So you get to decide whether you want to take the lead on that or not. Absolutely. Um, I am also happy to help with that to, to create <laughs> something that we can respond to. Okay. I mean, I think honestly, this one's not like a heavy lift. I, I, I can do the letter for that. That's fine. But if you'd like to, certainly you, you should go ahead and, you know, I don't want to, take it away from you if you are interested. Um, I'm happy to write it. So um, how about I will I will draft something and um, I will get it to people. Do we do we want to have a meeting in like two weeks about that to or I find this this need to have the, the public conversation about these sorts of things very frustrating. Well, we need to have a vote, I think, if we're going to actually or a put subcommittee that like gets that. tasked with it. Yeah, Tom. And I do like the idea of having everybody's name on it. it sounds. Perfect. Could we just circulate it by email, or? Yeah. Well, as long as no decisions are made. Right. We can't make any decisions about that, and I think that that editing, making comments on other people, like you couldn't, 
you couldn't then say, well, what about this? What about that? It would have to be all like, I'm just deleting the words you wrote. No comment. Uh, I'm fine with another meeting. It can be I am as well. It can be short and sweet. Yeah. All right. So I'll send you guys. Um, I, I I think that a Tuesday at four o'clock maybe is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So yep. I will I will work from that assumption um, and we'll schedule that. Okay. Uh, let's get out of this meeting, shall we? Yes. I move to adjourn. Second. Seconded. Oh, wow. We're all seconding. <laughs> okay. Uh, any further discussion of the need to stay in this meeting or leave it? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor of adjourning, holler aye. 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 Great. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for your time. Thanks for staying 12 minutes longer, and you'll hear from me shortly. Thank Great. you. Thanks, you, you guys. Everyone. Everyone. Thank you, Jeff. Everybody, thanks, Thank Jeff. You. Bye.